If you're trying to find some classic Christmas dinner recipes, don't look too far. This video will show you how to make a delicious juicy turkey, some lovely roast potatoes and some sprouts and gravy. So stay tuned and I'll show you how we can cook this. Let's start by making our juicy roast turkey. So here I'll be adding some black pepper, some sea salt, cayenne pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, as well as some smoked paprika to create my dry rub. Once you're done with adding all the seasonings together, just combine them until they are fully blended. That way you make sure that you get the same amount of deliciousness all over the turkey. So here I have my turkey which had already been washed and pat dried with a kitchen towel. Now what you want to do is to thoroughly season your turkey. Make sure it is fully coated with the seasoning. Don't worry about being heavy handed because a majority of that seasoning will probably drizzle off as you are cooking it. So just lather on the seasoning and make sure it is absolutely coated. Then what you will do is to move on and to use all the delicious and aromatic fresh herbs that I mentioned in the beginning. So that's your parsley, your sage and your rosemary. You want to go ahead and cut those and this will serve as part of our butter and herbs stuffing and you will see how that comes together. Now you want to go ahead and pour some lemon juice into your herb. Now it's time to combine your butter with the herbs. What you want to do is to ensure that your butter is at room temperature when you start working with it. This will make it a lot easier when it comes to combining together with the herbs. This step is very important in making sure that your turkey turns out beautifully. What you want to do is to wear a pair of gloves if you are a little bit squeamish about touching the turkey without it and you want to actually separate the skin from the meaty part of the turkey therefore creating a pocket where you can actually add your butter and herbs stuffing. It's honestly really easy you just have to have a little bit of patience and work all the way through the turkey. Once you're done creating the pockets throughout the turkey, what you want to do is to go ahead and lift up the skin, which will allow you to access the pockets that you've already created. And you want to ensure that you put the butter and herbs mix in as many pockets as you can, because what this will do is it will lock in the moisture. It will allow your turkey to cook thoroughly without drying out. And as much as this may seem as an unnecessary step, it is very necessary in ensuring that your turkey turns out beautifully moist and flavoured because the butter and the herbs have their own flavour, which then mix with a dry rub that we already have. Now, soon after that, what you want to do is to create the stuffing that you will actually put inside the turkey. And what I do is I prefer to use the same herbs that I used in my butter and herbs stuffing. So the sage, rosemary, as well as the parsley. And I also add red onions as well as white onions into the mix. And you want to add those into the cavity of the turkey. And as this starts to cook, those aromatic flavours of the onions as well as the herbs and the lemon that we'd added in there, they will start to infuse into the turkey, allowing it to be even more flavoursome, not only from the surface, but also from within. And this is why I said in the beginning, you need the dry herbs as well as the fresh herbs to allow this turkey to be delicious. So this will be our last step, which is drizzling some olive oil on top of the turkey to really seal in the dry rub that we've already got on there and you want to place it on a baking tray so that you're able to place this directly into your 
preheated oven. Now the best way to cook your turkey is to place it in the middle of the oven so that the heat is distributed evenly around the turkey allowing it to cook as well as it can. And after about two hours or so the turkey is already cooked and looking super super delicious and juicy and of course make sure you read the instructions for the turkey that you have because it all depends on the weight of the turkey that will dictate how long you have to cook it for but that's it that's how long it will take you to make this delicious turkey now next onto the roast potatoes you will only need five ingredients for this recipe but first you want to start by peeling the potatoes Okay, so it's now time to cut the potatoes. I chose to cut these potatoes in halves because I wanted to have the larger roast potatoes. However, if you do want to cut down the time it takes to make this recipe, do cut them down into quarters or even smaller if you prefer that. Before making your roast potatoes, it's important to wash them as thoroughly as possible possible and this actually helps when you're roasting because you remove that excess starch surrounding the potatoes and it allows them to be even more crispier so make sure you are thorough with your washing once you've cleaned your potatoes and drained the excess water you can go ahead and add some cold clean water into your pot once you've done this, go ahead and drizzle some sea salt into the potatoes and this will allow for them to be flavoured while they are boiling so that when you get round to roasting them, they already have flavour locked in. Once your potatoes are done, you should be able to just poke them through with a sharp knife and they do hold on to the knife ever so slightly, letting you know that they're cooked. You then want to go ahead and wash away that starchy water. This is before you can actually season them and put them on a baking tray. Now for the fun part, you want to go ahead and season your potatoes with sea salt. This will just lock in the flavors even more. And I love to use all-purpose seasoning. I think it's a very good all-round seasoning, especially for potatoes, and it allows for them to be extra crispy. And of course, adding the black pepper. This is also a favorite, favorite of mine when it comes to roast potatoes. Now to finish off the seasoning process, what I go ahead and do is to drizzle some duck fat onto the roast potatoes and I find that this really brings out the flavor of the potatoes. The duck fat already is quite rich in flavor so what this actually does is it allows for the potatoes once we put them in the oven to roast to get that beautiful golden brown that you want when you see your potatoes on the table. So go ahead and make sure that next time you cook duck you keep some of that duck fat aside so you can use it on your roasted potatoes and vegetables. And just like that we are done and the potatoes are in the oven ready to roast for roughly around 30 minutes. Time's up 30 minutes later and this is what we have beautiful golden brown crispy roast potatoes and you can see that they are sizzling and that is the duck fat doing its job now just plate your potatoes on a serving dish so just as promised these were quick and easy roast potatoes and if you use my technique of boiling them before you put them into the oven you will love the texture that you get when you make this recipe now it's time for us to make our delicious turkey gravy to pair with the turkey and potatoes you can find all the ingredients to make this delicious gravy in the description box below Now to start off with, you want to preheat your saucepan and then go ahead and add some stock. You can use some vegetable stock or some chicken stock, but I prefer to use turkey stock because of course we are making a roast turkey, so this is the perfect stock for it, but choose whatever you prefer. 
add some black pepper or you can also add some chili flakes at this point and you can also add some gravy granules to thicken the gravy but if you do not have any gravy granules you can add some plain flour in there just add it periodically so you do not get the clumps in there and use a whisk where you can so that you can make sure the gravy has a nice smooth consistency and after about five to seven minutes of lightly whisking and letting it simmer you'll have your perfect gravy ready to serve And here you have it you can see the gravy has a lovely consistency it seats nice and hot so you definitely want to let it stand for about two minutes before placing on a table and you can serve this gravy with anything that you want so now that our quick and simple turkey gravy is done we're going to go ahead and make our delicious buttery brussels sprouts now if you'd like to make this recipe you can find a list of all the ingredients in the description box and to begin with you want to use fresh brussels sprouts and the first step of cleaning them is to cut away the stem which is the hard part at the bottom of the sprout you want to peel off a few layers because some of the layers actually contain quite a lot of dirt that you're unable to clean away so that's the best way to go about it now after cleaning the sprouts what you want to do is to actually rinse them under cold water just to get the excess dirt off of the sprouts and this is what you should have so you can now transfer it onto your baking tray ready to be seasoned And for my favorite part it's time to season so I will start with some salt and follow up with some garlic powder black pepper mixed herbs a drizzle of lemon juice And drizzle on some melted butter to really seal in the dry ingredients once you have finished mixing in the seasoning you can place your baking tray into the preheated oven for around 20 minutes it doesn't take that long to cook and after 20 minutes we are done and you can just see how beautiful the brussels sprouts are and i can tell you that the aroma in my house right now is phenomenal once you've let your sprouts to sit for around five minutes you can then go ahead and place it in your preferred serving dish ready for the table for the final touch i'm going to add some chili flakes on the brussels sprouts this is completely optional and i'll also add some mozzarella cheese just to give it a little bit more of a smoothness to it because brussels sprouts can be a little bit bitter and we are done delicious buttery brussels sprouts if you've never tried brussels sprouts before you'll absolutely love this recipe and if you have and haven't liked them before i'm sure you will fall in love with them after this and now that all of our recipes are done it's time to carve the turkey 
I do have another video where I show you how I do this in depth but as you can see the turkey is plump it's juicy it is ready to be eaten and I just always like to have the portions of a turkey sliced up before I get it to the table because this makes it so much more easier for your guests to just pick out the pieces that they want but if you prefer to have the turkey carved at the table you could also do that but just look how beautiful it looks when you present it like this you really need to give this one a try but I hope that you have enjoyed the Christmas recipes in this video let me know in the comment section below which recipe you love the most and which one you'll be trying this Christmas and you can just see that once you serve it up on the table together it looks so amazing and the most amazing thing is that you get to share it with your loved ones so don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one